Hey everybody out there in YouTube land. Sorry it's been such a while. When the heat kicks in, and I'm talking high 80s or whatever, and humidity, and the temps are the 90s, whew, all I do is come from work and try to find a way to get cool, which usually would be sitting here by the fan, or sometimes even have to go into my bedroom where I only have my little air conditioner. But uh, I don't get a lot done when it's that hot. I, just, I can't take the heat, I never could. But in any case, when it, the, it gets cool enough to get stuff done, man, I go running like crazy to get stuff done around here. I make a list and I go after it. And um, today I got home from work this morning and I wanted to get stuff done, but I was so tired I had to lay down. So I ended up sleeping for a couple hours. And now I'm up, I'm in a daze, because that's what happens when you work overnight shifts and try to be a day walker, that's what we call it. Anyway, I had a topic I wanted to, to talk about, aside from showing you um, the, the, uh, the um, clay jack-o'-lanterns that I'm making, the footstool that I made, not footstool, step stool, uh, and the table that I made with my niece are some of the projects I've, I've done recently. So I'm always doing stuff. Just because I'm not on YouTube doesn't mean I'm not doing stuff. I'm always doing stuff. Um, but one of the things that um, I've been trying to figure out how to bring up in a conversation um, to try to share some tips about possibly, or warnings maybe, is online ordering, which I um, tend to do quite a bit of. And I had discovered that some of the things that we were ordering was coming from China. And um, it didn't really point that out clearly uh, when you were ordering things. And I wouldn't know that I had purchased it from China until I clicked pay and um, whatever form it was, um, Amazon or eBay or just something on the internet. And it would, it would say, you have a receipt from Wang Chung Wu or whatever, and it's all Chinese letters. And I was like, I saw nothing about Chinese when I read the description and where it was from. So I started double checking to be sure, and it would say ships from Louisiana, ships from Kansas, ships from Kentucky, ships from California. And I thought, okay, then we're safe. Nope. As soon as I would pay for the item, I'd see the receipt would come up and it was again from China. I was like, so I said, well, I have to come up with a better way to sort of protect myself online ordering. I'm only going to order from places that have PayPal. So I ended up on Facebook, which I should have known better, but there was an article. It's a pretty good ad on Facebook for uh, team sandals. They're kind of an uh, expensive sandal, but they last forever. I have some uh, two pairs here that I bought. Um, I've had them over 10 years. I've had them for a long time and they're really well worth the money. So anyway, I was on Facebook and it had an advertisement for Team Sandals with a big sale, like 70% off. I was like, wow, now I can get some. Ordered two pairs, I should have known better. You can't get two pair of Team Sandals for $56. But that's what I did, I ordered it, paid it with PayPal, I was all excited. And it said, please allow extra time for COVID due to the long shipping times now. I said, well, all right. Two months went by. I didn't get the sandals. So finally, I complained with PayPal, and I it said, you know, there's a, a special section on there. It says, did you get this item? So I had clicked. I did not. And I tried to contact the seller, and I got no response from the seller. Which, by the way, the seller ended up having three different emails for uh, contact information. There was one when I bought them, there was, and then after I paid for it, it said uh, so and so, whatever, at whatever the email address was, received the money. And then some, at some point down the line, when I got the receipt from PayPal, it was an entirely different one. As a matter of fact, it was a girl's name, like so and so at gmail.com. And I was like, what the heck? So, long story short, I filed a complaint with PayPal that I never got the item. They said, well, we're going to contact the seller um, and we'll, we'll get back to you on our decision. So, I don't even know how long it was that went between me waiting two months and then contacting PayPal and PayPal waiting to contact them and then deciding that um, to rule in my favor, it took, it was over three months, but they ruled in my favor and I got my $56 back. So I said, how do I protect myself from these online companies that are some kind of scam? And I thought, why isn't the people who are the real companies doing something about this? I guess it's a big deal. It's a really big deal that um, these, these online companies are pretending to be something they're not, and they get your money, and then they run. So uh, time goes by, and my son is a beekeeper, and he wanted a um, honey extractor. 
and we don't have a lot of money so i was looking in the 100 140 dollar price range to get a, just a little two two um oh, i can't even think what you call that two frame honey extractor that you spin it by hand and um there was a lot of them for about 130 so i picked one on i think it was amazon um paid for it it was like 139 dollars and about a week went by and i got an email and it said uh in broken english which i wish i had all these letters to read from but basically what it said was we check our inventory we have only one honey extractor upon examination we find it the damage we cannot send very sorry we now need to refund your money it's only one we have so very disappointed about that well then i'm like well when am i gonna get my refund and they said well refund may take at least five days or longer and i said to myself that's not right i paid for an item that they did not ship they admitted they never had it and then we'll get your money back to you you know sometimes five days or more you don't get to keep my money for five days or more and do what you want with it you didn't even give me the item so it's not like i'm returning it and then there's this wait while paperwork gets processed the contract was never fulfilled so why are you keeping my money um they didn't answer me and i got it back i actually did get it back like um, five days but um i was still a little perturbed about that so back online i go looking again i finally find another one it comes up uh, i typed in you know two frame honey emmanuel honey extractor and i was looking for days and i find another one popped up and it said um $99 special sale whatever I'm like oh my god that's $99 that's the cheapest one I've seen so stupid me I click on it and it, it had a picture of um, the thing the, the extractor it had a nice big description about it, it was stainless steel um, it had a see-through top it was this that and everything else it was from a, a company that is well known for making honey extractors I'm like I'm sold so um, I click on it and it says uh, paypal has paypal i'm like oh there we go okay it's a good description good picture it takes paypal so anything about china i'm gonna order it ships from oh, kansas ordered it and the receipt comes up received from and there it is again chinese uh chinese lettering i'm like well it's it's still paypal i'm just gonna wait and see what happens needless to say that was june i ordered it at the end of june um, there was an email from the buyer that was on the receipt from PayPal that if you need to contact them, you could. could. Well, I looked at the receipt from PayPal and something strange had happened. This is something that I intend to go on further with PayPal because um, I find it very egregious. The price was $99.49. Tax, nothing. Shipping, nothing. It actually said tax, zero. Shipping, zero. Total price, $99.49. Uh, I got a message from PayPal and it said, we have a receipt for you from Wing Chung Wang, whatever it was, uh, f uh, which will now further be known as Ace Prospecting Company or something like that. I was like, what? Ace International Prospects is what it was called. Originally, and this is the important part, it was called Saz Lab. When I ordered it, it was from the company called Saz Lab. Uh, after I paid, it said this uh, company will further be known as Ace Prospects Unlimited International. And, um, the receipt now said $114.40. And I was, wait a minute. So I looked at the receipt, it said price $99.49. Shipping zero, handling zero. Total price $114.40, $0.42, something like that. So I sent an email and I said, why did the price change? What is this extra amount? I got no response. So then I sent a, a, a complaint to PayPal. Why did you allow a payment of $114 and something when i clicked pay this amount and it was only 99. please review the receipt because you can see on your on the receipt it doesn't explain why there was almost 15 dollars extra taken from my paypal account paypal didn't respond and i said i want to file a complaint something's wrong i want the product but i want them to tell me which uh and it said oh it said uh, contact the seller at the email provided i sent another email no response now this is over a period of from the time i ordered it this took us all the way through july Got no response from the seller. Uh, they sent me a, sh a shipping I, uh, a number, which turned out to be this big, funny-looking ad in Chinese. We picture a little plane and something else, and then it said, um, preparing shipment for new to another country or something like that. It was really generic. I checked that thing every day for over three weeks. It never changed. It kept saying, preparing for shipment to another country. 
Um, at the end of July, I said, uh, I'm a little getting a little nervous here. Uh, there's no communication. I had sent two emails. I contacted PayPal. PayPal sent me a thing and they said they did not rule in my favor as, as far as my request about the why there was a difference. They just said, we did not rule in your favor. I'm like, well, that's crap. Uh, why would they say it's okay for that company to charge me money that it never explained what the extra charge was? So now I'm getting a little angry. So now we're in August. I send two more emails to the only email I had as far as that company went that went unanswered. Uh, and then I typed in at Google Sales Lab and that was a big mistake. It came up all over the internet as a fake company that often uses United States emailing or uh, United States shipping addresses when in fact it's an overseas Chinese account. Um, they set up these accounts on the internet with uh, think, pictures and item descriptions that they steal from other sites um, and make their website look to look legit. And then um, they even did went further and got uh, PayPal hooked up. So when I paid, I paid through PayPal to a, a company that shut down. I don't know how long it was open before I found it, but obviously it shut down right after I ordered that uh, $114 item. So now I'm really pissed. So I send another email to PayPal and I say, I want to file. It's now the middle of August. I, I ordered the item in June, the end of June. Um, I have not received any communication from the seller. Uh, the shipping thing has never changed. It's been the same for over a month. Um, it's, not, it's a bogus shipping uh, tracking number system and um and so i filed an official complaint and of course paypal says well we'll investigate we're going to give the seller x amount of time we'll get back to you so you know weeks later um i finally get a thing it says they've ruled in my favor now this is september i just got it the other day so from the end of june until uh the first week of september this is how long i've been fighting over this thing and i got no response from paypal as to why they authorized that um, additional payment that was never explained, I didn't okay it. So they've been mute about that. Um, and then of course, the fact that, how did this happen? That people can just set up a, an account that's fake and you send your money for items that don't exist, never did exist. Um, at some point though, I uh, had seen the exact picture of the item I bought, tried to buy, um, and a description from some other site on Amazon. They actually had just like Photoshop the whole ad and put it on their own uh, fake website. So now I'm thinking, how in the world do you protect yourself online if A, you can't tell if it's really from the United States or not. B, they don't tell you the name of the seller, the real name, until you get your receipt and you know the email. And C, if um, um, PayPal isn't gonna be legitimately protecting you by getting rid of these companies and are or allowing you know additional um fees to be added without acknowledging from the buyer i mean how else do you protect yourself from all this online scamming so i guess the only tips i have as far as online ordering is i still am making sure that they accept paypal as a form of payment because at least i have some assurance that should something go wrong paypal uh, will stand by their um, promise to protect the consumer and luckily, like I said with the two things that I ordered luckily I was able to get my money back even though I went through the stress of you know not getting the product that I thought I was getting um, and then to stay with sites that are more um, more well known like for instance don't order things off of Facebook it's, just don't yeah, um, I guess eBay, I really haven't had that many problems with eBay or Amazon. And then I saw, I would say that um, ordering just online by Googling the item and then getting it from companies that you've never heard of, that would probably be another uh, red flag. Stick with uh, legitimate companies. Or if they even give you a chance to contact them about the item beforehand, maybe that would be a thing too and see if you can get a response from them because no response would definitely be a red flag. And I would say don't order if you've uh, contacted some type of a uh, company about their item and they don't respond to you so um yeah that's my my experience luckily i got my money back still don't have a honey extractor which is really sad because my son said he has five hives tons of honey and he's having to extract them by hand which i did go and help him that one time it was really fun but boy it's very messy when you don't have a honey extractor so here i am it's a day off um i'm gonna finish these jack-o-lanterns 
uh, I, I'll show a picture of what I did before. I made them one time before. And I put them on a block of wood. I painted the wood dark. I put them on a block of wood with these little miniature bales of hay and some fake autumn foliage. And I put up a sign that said, A Haunted Pumpkin Patch. Um, I made two of those. And my sister got one. My mother got the other one. And I was sitting here thinking, I'm going to make some more. Maybe I'll give them out at work. But just some little ones. So I already ordered the little miniature bales of hay. I've got to make plaques. Of course, i got to put all their details on them. Um, they just these cute little things. And then, you know, you put the, the lines in that makes it look like a pumpkin. And then I put the little faces in. And I was online and I, I printed up a bunch of little faces. And then I can, like, lightly carve the faces on here. And then after these are baked and they're hard, I paint them. Um, but I will have, it'll be, have the, the, it'll be, like, etched into them a little bit. Rather than just painted entirely on. And then uh, they get baked at, like, 200 for, I don't know, a couple minutes or whatever. It makes them hard. And then I can paint them all, and then I can, when the bales come, I'll set up, set them up and make them little haunted jack-o'-lanterns sitting on these little plaques. They're just cute to set out on the table. Um, other than that, I'm kind of getting my brain wrapped around the fact that um, winter will be coming before we know it. What do I have to do to get ready for it? Um, I've been rearranging things in the house, the garage, so I can hole up all winter long and do crafts. And then work. So that's it. That's what I've been up to. As always, thanks for watching. Any questions, let me know. Sorry it's been so long. But it was kind of hard to figure out how to explain all this stuff about PayPal. And the ordering of things. And I couldn't get my brain to... Sometimes my brain just doesn't want to work. My niece had been shopping for a table to put in her room to put her computer on. She couldn't find anything she liked, but she knew the measurements... So we discussed uh, two by fours. So she went shopping, got the two by fours. I chopped them up, assembled the desk. She sanded it for about two days straight, put some stain on it. I threw some wheels on it and voila, she was very happy. This is my little uh, step stool project. I uh, needed to reach some stuff on the wall to hang and as I get older, I get shorter. Didn't want to have to drag a ladder in all the time. So I made myself this cute little step stool out of two by fours and a few other scrap pieces of wood I had. This is Sculpey clay. It's, uh, I don't know, polymer clay? Is that what it's called? Anyway, and there's my little pasta maker to flatten the clay out into thin sheets, which I will then use to coat the shapes that I made from foil. It usually clamps to a table, but for this uh, recording here, I just set it on the tabletop to try to show you how it works. You stuff the clay in there, it comes out in a thin sheet, which can be then um, molded around the foil shape. For these ones, I scratched the faces in with a pointy little sharp thing. Uh, you could actually mold them into it if you wanted to. 